Hi, I'm Tsul Moraba. I'm the general manager of Gala Music Publishers, part of Gala Music Group. And, Shola, what has happened with Gallo over the past few years? Um, Gallo has been uh, around SA, um, well, South Africa, for almost 90 years, with 90 years next year, September. Yeah. Uh, so there'll be lots of celebrations around it. And starting from a grab and phone company to a record label, music publishing company, Gallo has evolved um, so many times. Yes. Um, of late was the separation from Warner Music, which was uh, the Warner Music Gallo Africa JV. Yeah. Uh, which housed Gallo's digital um, assets uh, for Warner to exploit around the world. Yeah. And at the same time, Gallo um, did the physical um, exploitation of Warner's uh, repertoire in Africa. Um, so two years ago, Warner actually left and started their own office. Gallo came back to focus on our catalog. And in, uh, in those two years, it was really developing and remining the catalog. And then bringing a um, new um, a dedication and focus in the digital space. So Gallo began to now manage our own uh, digital rights and exploit them directly uh, through different uh, industry aggregators uh, on the online space and then on the mobile space as well. New opportunities came through um, and through the Times Media Group was the acquisition of Sheer Record Label uh, or Sheer Sound as it's called, uh, which have come in. Um, she assigned was known for their very strong um, jazz and uh, world music uh, catalogs. They came in and uh, beefed up really Gala's frontline um, position in terms of recording acts like um, the Polytones, uh, Khan Moby, um, and uh, she had already come with some nice brand new um, acts like Jeremy Loops, who were very interesting and very, um, very uh, current and modern, that mm. kind of thing. At the back of the Shea acquisition was Buller, Buller Records, which was known to be um, a, an old, um, strong, independent uh, gospel and uh, traditional label. And that's also just bolstered and added to Gala's assets. Um, you've also been selling to, selling in a sense, rights to TV companies and to um, other organizations. And you've opened in, uh, in Kenya through yeah. an organisation. Describe to me that activity. Yeah. Um, on the publishing side, we have Gala Music Publishers, which obviously looks after the copyrights and collections uh, for performance and mechanical usage. And key part of that is the synchronisation. So as an owner of both um, the Gala Masters and Gala uh, copyrights, we're able to very easily license a lot of our uh, synchronizations for movies, for soundtracks, for example, the Mandela movie. It was a lot of the Gallo heritage South African music, that, that's the music of the time. Mm. And we were able to work together on the label side and on the publishing side to license that. But moving further than that is the production music space, which is where um, we've really moved in and uh, took, o took over the management of um, libraries like Urban Brews URF um, Music Library which we're exploiting here and now in Kenya. Uh, we've just literally opened a storefront, we we'll call mm. it a storefront, not actually a label. So it's a storefront, it's an extension mm. of our licensing of both Anglo-American repertoire, the likes of Warner Chapel, Disney, and uh, many, many others. But um, really also looking at the domestic catalog, which is being played and exploited quite, um, quite um, aggressively out on the continent mm. and is quite popular there. So what we've done is we've partnered with Radio Africa, which is now part of the Times Media Group, to actually allow music users in the African continent to actually, well, in East Africa at the moment, mm. we'll be looking at other um, territories in time, but to actually have a place where they can actually go and physically walk in and say, well, can I sample some tracks? Can you give me a hard drive? Can I go and use this in my production? Mm. And to ease that licensing um, timeline, really, that I turnaround time. Exactly. Yeah, it's really about the turnaround time. When you're on deadline doing a production, yeah. you want to get your music and be able to deliver either to clients or deliver your film as soon as possible. So really, it's, it's a strategic move to say that we want to actually, one, participate and really give people access directly to the content that they want to use. You're on the board of SAMRO. Yes, I'm on the board of SAMRO, which is the South African um, 
similar to PRS, the Performing Rights Collections Organization, and on the MPASA, which is the Music Publishers Association, um, and also sits on the Capasso Digital uh, Portfolio Committee, which I'm currently mm. chairing. Um, so from a SAMRA perspective, um, SAMRA has really been working hard to um, bring efficiencies into the collection of uh, performance royalties, whether from broadcasters, radio stations, public performance, and uh, more recently, the digital um, side of things as well. And you put in a whole new platform in Capasso. Yes. Um, SAMRA actually is the one that um, Im implemented a big new system which uh, was developed originally by Accenture and used by Boomer St Stemra, um, which really has enhanced how we uh, process collections, how we report mm -hmm. collections. And we've seen over the past two years with the system, and I mean through all the teething problems and everything else, that actually our processed works have gone up and then our uh, paid out royalties have also gone up. And so the revenues have gone up from what to what? Um, we're looking at um, numbers of about 250 million to about right now almost just under half a billion rand in collections and then um, the distributions have also gone up. Yes, yes, yeah, they've exactly. also gone up, yeah. yeah. So things are looking a lot better and those, it's those kind of efficiencies that um, Sam is in partnership and conversation mm. and dialogue with uh, the sister societies throughout the continent to actually make room or create uh, ring-fenced um, environments for them to utilize the similar system or bits of the system yeah. for their own processing throughout the continent. And it was also key in the signing with iTunes because it provided um, in a sense a, a single shop to, to deal with That's right. a whole series of territories. How did that work? That's right. Um, so the birth of Capasso is really to um, unlock digital revenues, to unlock the processing of digital copyrights um, for the continent. Mm -hmm. And what happened was um, we went into with Capasso, Samra and the MPA, all three, yeah. went into dialogue and into partnership with a lot of the societies around the, the, the continent saying, well, let us have a one-stop licensing shop where rights holders and will be represented and music users can go there and actually license for the whole continent and actually pay and we will make sure that we process and we're transparent about everything, we'll share statements and make our claims, you make your claims. And so basically it opened up an opportunity to really work together, to begin to actually um, have bigger dialogues about, well, what else can we do in the territories? What um, efficiencies can we exchange? Mm -hmm. What knowledge can we actually exchange? And it's worked out quite well. Um, and do you think that the other African collection societies, if they went through a similar process, that their revenues would show a similar rise in um, amounts? Do you think that's I that mean, potential rise? There? Yeah, uh, technology does a lot. It's really, really done a lot. And I mean, from where we were in this territory to where we are now, a lot of it is the technology that has been implemented. And I mean, looking forward, we are looking at other things like sign masks to help mm. moving away from analog and physical writing out of cue sheets, one, processing mm. that takes a long time. Put that in spreadsheets, more time. Um, opening notifications, CWR, you can have mm. a million files. Um, and you, you wouldn't be able to do that physically. Mm. So technology does play a big role. And these are the dialogues that we're having with uh, the different societies saying, well, we have made an investment. It is a scalable system. Um, either you can choose to go and buy your own, or we can actually scale this one and tailor make it to actually meet the needs of as many willing participants on the continent.